and welcome to Curious on Hudson's Spaghetti Tower Challenge Tutorial. My name is Jackie and I'm going to walk you through some of the basics for this project. So to start off, one of the best sources that we have is our Spaghetti Tower Lesson Guide. So please see that for some additional resources as well as some more detailed explanations. Let's get started. Each group's goal will be to experiment with the different materials and build the tallest and sturdiest structure possible. We will have some kind of rules that we'll have on their sheets, and one is you can use any length of spaghetti and you can double them up as you wish. You can choose from connectors of marshmallows or gumdrops. Your tower must be able to stand on its own. You can only use the materials provided. We'll also add in a challenge to it. For example, that the tower must be at least three levels tall. Each group will receive the following items. Some small marshmallows, large marshmallows, gumdrops, spaghetti, kind of reference sheet that they can use throughout the event, a ruler, a pencil, and some paper. To start off, here's a basic summary of the physics and engineering that the girls will be learning. A force is a push or a pull in an on an object. We often use arrows. to draw out forces to better understand how they work. Forces can be broken down into what we call force components, or smaller forces that when added together make the original force. For example, if I have this large force, force F, represented as going up in this direction, it is the same as taking little forces A and B and adding them together. So basically, if you follow the same path, you'll follow the same path as force F. For every force, there is an opposite and equal reaction force. These reaction forces cause objects to go under tension and compression. So for example, if we have this object and a force F pushes on it in this direction, we'll have a force R in this direction. These two forces pulling the item apart causes it to go under tension. So tension is when two forces pull apart an object. If an object is being pushed upon by force F, the reaction force will also push upon it in the opposite direction and it will cause compression. So compression is forces pushing together on an object. Over time, these constant forces on an object will lead it to break. So whenever a force is applied, it causes stress on an object. Just like a paper clip, when the object is repeatedly stressed and unstressed, it will eventually break. You never want an object to be acted on by these blunt forces. So you never want an object to be under full tension or full compression. To stop this from happening, structures are built to combine tension, compression, and force components to distribute the forces and stress applied to each individual object. This is done using triangles. So a basic structure will be made up of three smaller components. What will happen is usually a load, which is usually the weight of the whole structure, will be applied up on top. Down at this point, there's also forces acting upward just from where the object is resting. So because of this load, it is pushing these top two pieces down like this. From these two points, it's pushing upwards. This will cause these two side components to be in compression. On the bottom here, these objects will actually be pulled apart because of these forces. And this will be in tension. So because these large forces are kind of distributed out, no object will be subjected to too much force and will break. To start off, I'm going to show you how to build a basic tower. So the girls will have a copy of this on their instruction sheet. This is not the only type of tower that they can build. They're allowed to get creative, try anything they want. This one uses basic triangles and squares. So to start off, how to break your spaghetti. Each group will have a ruler. The best way to do this is by putting your piece of spaghetti 
next to the ruler, however long you'd want to be, this to be. So for example, I'm going to choose four inches. Stick your finger there and then just break a piece of spaghetti. Very easy. So we broke some spaghetti already and we started forming our squares. So this is just four small pieces of spaghetti put together into a square. To create the pyramid part, we are using the longer pieces left over from our broken spaghetti. And you simply put them in each of the four corners and attach them with a marshmallow. Now, please encourage the girls to be very fragile with their spaghetti because it does break easily. If it breaks, there's nothing wrong with that. They just grab a new piece of spaghetti. So on each square, you'll want to add a triangle or a pyramid. From this point, connect all the tops of your pyramids into new squares. So from here, you could easily build another pyramid on top. There's other things that you can do to help make your pyramid stronger. For example, on the bottom pieces, you can put two pieces of spaghetti to give it extra support, as well as the bigger the base, so the more squares you start off with in the beginning, the stronger your overall structure would be. To start building up into the next portion, you need to change your building structure a little bit. So you start off by making two V's on both the center pieces. These V's will come up and connect into a square. It's all going. This is where teamwork in the group project will come in hand because the girls will have to help each other as they build. Now to keep these up on the side, we're going to add cross beams. So measure out your spaghetti and have it cross over on the sides. Sometimes the spaghetti will be a little bit too long like we have over here. You can easily push it th down through the marshmallow until it is even and then break off any extra pieces like that. As you can see, we put some side pieces on like that. You do the same on the other side. as well as you can add pieces over here just to add some more triangles in.
growth will also can be encouraged to build these things called buttresses. So what those are, are pieces that come out of a side. So they come out from this direction. And they're just additional V's. So these add just an extra support on the side and when you put your top part of your tower on it that can be used to secure it. So if you continue to build up with a cube, as we build up on our tower you're just going to want to make basic cubes. So start from this one spot and work your way up. So where the buttresses come in is that you can use them to kind of reinforce part of your triangle up here. So what you can do, and there's many different ways to do this, you can simply have them come down and connect here, or some people choose to make an additional triangle over here and then connect them vertically. For now, we're just going to go a nice diagonal. So this is a great way just to make a base for your tower. So you can continue this process. The girls are also encouraged to add reinforcements on the side, to add in more triangles, or even across the middle. Now, this whole thing, as you can see, can get pretty lopsided, and pieces at the bottom can break or come undone. Just very carefully, if they have to replace pieces, they just have to go in very, very gently remeasure and recut new pieces. So a lot of these towers will just fall down, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, they a lot of people think that these are going to be magnificent towers that will never break, but in reality you're making a tower out of marshmallows, gumdrops, and spaghetti. So things are going to break, things are going to collapse. Sometimes the marshmallows start to melt a little bit and then the, it will kind of like tip to the side. But this project is all about the girls learning from their experiences and learning from mistakes. Here, we like to say there's no such thing as failure. So even if something does collapse and completely fall apart, there's nothing wrong with that because hopefully they'll be learning from their mistakes. So whenever you have your team, you can encourage them to try using this model, encourage them to use triangles as much as possible, but most of all, encourage them to work together and to just learn from their mistakes and make the best tower possible. There's usually by the end some groups that have crazy towers that look completely different, and I'll show you some pictures of those. And then there are some groups where their tower just completely fell apart and they don't have anything to present. But instead, we encourage those girls to talk about what went wrong, what didn't go wrong. So as always, encourage, try and stay positive and just encourage the girls to have fun, to test stuff out and work together. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys have fun at the Spaghetti Tower Challenge.